50 caliber machine gun is an anti-armored vehicle weapon. Carried in packs by cavalry units, it affords a ready means of defense against tanks or armored cars. It is a weapon of great power. Using armor-piercing ammunition, its projectiles will penetrate the heaviest armor of such armored vehicles as are likely to be encountered by cavalry. The gun and tripod are a normal weight load for a cavalry pack horse. On the near side, the receiver balances the offside load of the barrel and the tripod. When so packed, the gun has the same mobility as a mounted trooper. The box on top of the load contains spare parts. The ammunition is also carried on pack horses. Each pack animal carries four boxes of a hundred rounds each. The basic organization for the employment of the 50 caliber machine gun is a squad. A squad consists of a corporal and six privates, all mounted. It has one gun horse and two ammunition horses. The gun squad has great maneuver ability. It marches as fast and as far as other cavalry units. It is not stopped by obstacles, such as accidents of the ground, mud, or poor roads. Its ability to move over ground that is impracticable for mechanized units gives it a great tactical advantage in combat with armored cars or tanks. From its position on the pack horse, the gun can be unpacked and put into action in 20 seconds. After screwing the barrel onto the receiver, the gun is ready for loading and firing. The gun is light enough to permit rapid displacement for short distances dismounted without disassembling. It will be noted that when the gun is ready for action, it presents a relatively small and obscure target. The armor-piercing projectile penetrates armor of one half inch thickness at a thousand yards. The heaviest armor now used on vehicles with which cavalry is apt to be engaged is five-eighths of an inch thick. This old tank with 5 8 inch armor was penetrated at 600 yards. Marching cavalry habitually uses roads and may therefore be attacked by hostile armored cars or combat cars. The anti-tank guns must be prepared for such encounters. A blue cavalry regiment is marching north into red territory on an offensive mission. The reds are known to have mechanized cavalry in the vicinity of Milford, 12 miles north of Lamont, though no reds have yet been encountered. A troop is detailed as advance guard of the regiment. The troop has attached to it one section of two 50 caliber machine guns. One gun squad is placed at the tail of the advance party and one near the head of the support. Such an arrangement gives desirable echelon in depth. A section of hostile combat cars observes the march of the regiment. Against troops not equipped to cope with mechanized forces, the armored vehicle has a decided advantage. But against trained troops equipped with anti-tank weapons, it is a different story. The red cars decide to make a surprise attack on the blue advance guard, thus delaying the main body. The point of the blue advance guard is marching along the road through open country. Over a distant ridge, the approaching cars appear. The leading troopers, upon sighting them, give the signal, armored cars ahead, and quickly leave the road to dismount under cover. The signal is relayed to the rear by connecting files, while the point deploys to use its rifles against the oncoming cars. If time does not permit the point to fire as the cars go by, it may lay in wait for them in case they come back. The advance party is following the point at about 500 yards. The signal from the point is seen and relayed to the support. The advance party is halted. The lieutenant in command directs the light machine guns and the 50 caliber machine gun to go into action on the road. The remainder of the platoon clears the road and takes cover. Here they dismount and prepare to fire on the cars with armor-piercing ammunition. Time in this situation is more important than an ideal gun position. Against hostile cars which are limited to roads, almost any position on the roadside is satisfactory. In a few seconds, the gun is in position, ready to fire up the road when the cars appear. The gun is a relatively small, obscure target. It is sighted on the point 
at which the cars must come into view. The cars will present a larger target at close range. The element of surprise is now with the 50 caliber gun, for it knows where the cars must appear, but the cars do not know where they are to meet resistance. Having broken through the point defense, the cars soon appear around a bend in the road in range of the 50 caliber gun. The gun opens fire on the leading car using one round of tracer to each three or four rounds of armor piercing ammunition. Thus the gun is easily kept on the target. In the meantime, the support following some six or seven hundred yards behind the advance party receives the relayed signal. The support commander directs the 50 caliber machine gun to go into action on the side of the road. The remainder of the support quickly clears the road and prepares to support the anti-tank gun by rifle and light machine gun fire, while the 50 caliber gun crew place their weapon to command the road to the front, ready to engage the hostile cars in case they break through the fire of the advance party gun. But the leading gun has done its work. The cars have been put out of action by the combined fires of the advance party and its 50 caliber machine gun. A weapon which can easily penetrate any but the heaviest armor, a weapon which can be packed on one horse and which can be put into action from pack in the time that it takes a car going 30 miles an hour to move 300 yards, such a weapon puts a new face on the problem of defense against armored vehicles. 